All right, welcome back to the channel, family. Today we're gonna to be working on the Audi Q7. If you're new to the channel, I have several project cars. I have the Audi here, the Q7. I have the twin turbo LS swap Skylark that we've been working on. Uh, we have the Ecotech powered supercharged 33 Ford pickup. If we move on through the fleet, we have the 73 Camaro with the single turbo. You can see that there. And that's LS swap as well. We got the newest to the fleet, which is the GLA 250. And then we got the JK Wrangler. Uh, this one here, ARB locker in the rear, sitting on 35s uh, in a three inch lift. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little update on the project vehicles we have for the channel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We got a lot of content. I drop at least once a week. So uh, again, if you want to help out the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But let's jump into it today. Today we're working on the Audi Q7. If you guys are longtime followers, you know in my second video I mentioned things I didn't like about the Audi. One was this retractable seat. It's fully electronic, so with electronics, sometimes they fail. Um, and so, because it's not manual, there's a high chance of failure. In this case, the seat won't retract, no matter whether I hit the button or not from here, or I use the buttons on this side. So there's buttons on the, the passenger as well as the driver's side over there. Uh, but either way, you can hear it actuating, but it seems like the locking mechanism for the seat back is not releasing for it to drop. Uh, now this passenger side works just fine. It raises in the position, as you can see there, and it also lowers. So no issues on this side, but what we want to figure out is what's going on over there on the passenger side third row. Uh, I will be taking a trip soon. It's gonna be a long trip. We're gonna take lots of luggage and other items. So I wanna have as much room back here as possible. So I wanna be able to get that seat to retract. And it's been at least two and a half years I've been dealing with it staying up. Uh, so it's about time I go ahead and start working on it and see what's going on. So we're gonna to jump to a quick intro and then I'll cut back to you guys and we'll be taking the seat apart. All right, fam, so now we're gonna go ahead and take the seat apart. First thing we're gonna start with is taking the seat bottom out. Um, you can see here where the anchors are for the child seat. You could just pop these little plastic clips out by pulling forward. And you pop all four of these clips out. Set those aside. Now you're gonna reach underneath the front of the seat, pop up, and then pull out. Then you're gonna discover all kinds of stuff underneath the seat that you didn't know existed. The next thing we're gonna do is take the seat back out. I don't know if they both come out together. I'm assuming it does as one piece. Uh, unfortunately, we can't just work on that one side. We'll have to take them both out. Uh, so let me try to figure out uh, how to unbolt this all right fam so on quick observation it looks like this seat back bracket uh, goes underneath this panel here on the side of the trunk uh, which actually runs all the way to the front well not to the front but to the front of the third row seat so this whole panel needs to come out uh, in order to get that out looks like this trim panel across the back deck lid here needs to come out of the way. So we're gonna pull this seal. And then we're gonna pop this trim panel here off on the tailgate. Just pops right up. You see the clips there underneath? Clips here, 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 here. All the way across, just pop right out. I'm gonna set that aside. All right, let's ignore all my mess here in the storage area. 
Uh, so now that we got that piece off the top here, um, we got to figure out how this is mounted. So it doesn't look like it goes too far underneath this side panel. So I don't think we need to take the side panel off, but I'm going to figure out how to get this piece off. Let me, uh, cut back to you guys after I figure it out. I'm going to have to use both hands for this. So I'm gonna put the camera down. Okay. I took a quick look and it looks like these hooks here have to come out first. Uh, these tie down areas, I should say. So these I have to come out first. So in order to get those out, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go underneath it here with the screwdriver. There's a plastic cap here. I'm just going to pop it up. That's going to expose a 12 point Torx bit. Uh, Audi loves these things. I think BMW, all Germans, I think have these uh, 12 point Torx bit. So I have the set. I should have that size. And hopefully I have the size. So there, that's a 12 point Torx there. Hopefully it's the right size. It is. So go ahead and unbolt that. And hopefully that's all that's holding this thing on. All right, just like that. So we're going to go around and take all four of them out. There's one on each corner, one over here. We got this one out. Uh, there's one down there. And one right there. So we'll go ahead and take all those out. This uh, panel on the side, it goes underneath it just a bit, but it doesn't seem like we have to take that side panel off. At least I hope not. So hopefully we can still clear it. We work on the front. So yeah, this side panel is definitely over the top of it. So I'm gonna put the camera down, put you guys back on the tripod and uh, get both sides out. All right, guys, so we did have to take off the side panel in order to get this out. Uh, because it goes underneath that side panel pretty deep here, especially in the center between the seats. So it's impossible uh, or almost impossible to get out without popping out the side cover. Now it did come out with just pulling on it. There's just clips here on the side uh, all the way around and it pops right out. Um, the only caveat is here on the driver's side, there's a little cargo hook here. So we need to pop this cap off here. Hopefully you can see it. And in order to get to the screw behind there, um, you just reach in from the top and hopefully pry down and it pops right out. So I pried down on it and I got some needle nose. I'm gonna try to wiggle it out because it was a little bit of a pain to really get out with just a screwdriver. So we should be able to see a screw in here. Uh, it looks like a six point Torx. All right, so we'll just take this screw out. All right, so there's our screw. Save that for later. All right, now that we got that screw out from here, we're going to go across to the back of the panel and we need to disconnect the power for our charge port here. 
charge port here on the front so we go to the back in order to get that out there's a little tab here hopefully you guys can see at the back of the connector you just depress it with your finger or with a screwdriver uh, it's right here I know it's a little hard to see in the dark here but it's right there and you just pull it out now for your switch rather than disconnecting it here uh, from the connector I'm gonna leave the switch in place in case I need to use it and diagnosing the seat issue so I'm gonna need this switch panel um, I don't want to disturb the circuitry for this seat um, so that way I make sure the whole circuits complete I'm gonna leave the switch in instead of disconnecting the connector I'm just gonna pop this whole panel out so this whole panel here I'm just gonna pop out of place what you want to do is just really push it from behind and it'll pop right out and see it falls right out and then you turn it at an angle and push it through the panel and I'm just gonna leave that and then we'll go ahead and pull this panel out all right let me switch to both hands and put you on tripod all right folks so we got these side panels out on both sides now we could take this trim panel out hopefully here at the bottom a lot easier let's make sure we're disconnected up front so that panel comes right out i'm just going to set that aside with the rest of these panels come back and grab this side so a lot of trim panels have to come out for this job now that we got that side piece out those trim panels out both sides uh, that exposes our bolts here for the seat one here near the bottom of the seat belt uh, there's one on the corresponding side over there and if we come around to the back you can see the bolt here in here so those are our four bolts holding the seat back in place we'll get those out and pull the whole seat assembly out uh, now these bolts are 18 millimeter yes i said 18 uh, this is probably one of the first time i ever had to use an 18 millimeter i'm sure you guys can agree that's not often used size but in audi they seem to like 18 all right so we're going to use our 18 millimeter here to break these bolts free so let me jump to that. All right, let's see if we can lean this thing forward. Oh wow, it looks like the seat belt's actually connected to the seat base. And obviously there's gonna be some wires to disconnect here too. Might as well do that now. All right, just depress the tabs. And these wires come right out. So this one has two, one on each side, and this one has one right here. All right, so we'll disconnect that. We've got more connectors on this side as well. So same thing. Depress it. And same on this side. We want to disconnect those and then pop it out here the back of the seat all right guys so the last 
thing we have connected to our seat back here is the seat belt. Uh, you can see it's connected to the base of the seat here. Uh, so in order to get that out, let's just first pl pry this plastic cover out of the way so we can see what we're doing. And then if you see here, it's kind of got a slot here for the actual tang that it amounts to or this tab to slide through. So what we're going to do is take this metal clip here and either pry it with a screwdriver it's hard to see i'm sure but you want to try to pry it out i'm just using my fingers uh, but you can use a screwdriver as well and then once you pry it out it'll allow it to slide down this shaft into that wider part here where it will pop out if you can see that there so it's just this little tab on the back that you're prying apart now the seat back should be completely free. We're going to take it out and work on it in the garage. All right, fam, now that we got the seat back out, uh, we're going to start disassembling it. Now we're working on the third row driver's side seat back. So we're going to have to start here with taking the upholstery off. I'm going to try to salvage the upholstery. I don't think we're going to damage it, but again, we'll see as we go what happens. But you want to go ahead and pop off this trim piece here for the inner part of this bracket. So there's a little latch that you flip open here. You just use your pocket screwdriver. You'll see there's a bar that's connected to here. You're going to pop it up and off of that bar. Hopefully you guys can see. And then right here, you're going to press, press this tab downward and out. And it should pop right out, rotate right off of there like that. So you want to take that piece out over the side. Now we're going to flip it around in here so you all can see. All right, so there's this piece here on the back. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, you just get your screwdriver in and there's some clips in here you pop out Try not to break it uh, But there's these tabs like this one's a little damaged from me taking it off just now um, But it should still hold when we put it back together, but there's these three tabs here So go ahead and take that off the back Once you got the back of the seat exposed um it's just standard upholstery, so there's going to be hooks and loops. Um, it looks like there's a little loop here uh, that hooks onto the back of the seat frame. So we're just going to push down or pull down and then up and over. And it comes off these little tabs here. And you'll see where it's hooked on here uh, beneath the fabric. So we're just going to look for stuff like that all the way around. Uh, taking this whole... Um, upholstery off. I think this piece on the back looks like it's probably attached from the inside to the seat back frame. So this will probably stay but we're going to take apart uh, the soft part on the side that you sit on. Uh, and it should be just a hook and loop all the way around. Across here it looks like there's probably uh, a little loop into a channel here and you have to push it and unhook it uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that now all the way around uh, this side here needs to be popped off just like on this one so we we'll just grab our screwdriver and reach in there and carefully pop those three tabs out And set that aside it's going to come in here and pop it out of its groove it's like in a channel there and it just kind of hooked around so you're just going to pull it out all the way around so see how it's starting to come off here we're just going to go all the way up and around and then down here will be kind of similar the same thing uh, just gonna be a harder angle to reach yeah well let me get it all the way around first and that'll loosen it up down here 
So we're just going to essentially do the same thing on this side. Unhook it there. Pull this up if we can. There we go. And once it starts coming out, it's pretty easy to slide your finger up there and pull the rest out. Just be careful because there's some sharp spots here along the frame. This metal gets really sharp. And then we're just going to do the same thing all the way up and around. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to start back up here on the top. Right here on these corners though, it's kind of tough. Changing directions. Again, just kind of work its way around. All right, so that's that. All right, now that we got it removed all the way around from the seat back frame, uh, what we're going to do now is start working on the bottom here. I'm gonna see if I could get enough slat pulled around to get this side out. But what I wanna try not to do is have to take the headrest off because it is automatic, so there's some mechanical pieces in here uh, that integrate with the seat folding. I don't wanna to have to deal with. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like, but I'm not gonna worry about taking this off. I don't think I'll need to. I'll just go ahead and peel the seat back up and the upholstery off and the foam out. And then I could see the mechanical pieces inside here. Um, I don't I don't need to take the headrest off to do that from what I can see. All right, so let's turn it here so you guys can see it a little better, hopefully. Uh, this is where we're trying to get the upholstery disconnected at the bottom here, the seat frame. So I'm just going to pull or push as much fabric this way as possible to get a little slack here. And I'm just going to gently use my screwdriver to find this leading edge. There we go. All right. And then afterwards, I'm going to use my fingers here just to slowly roll it out of the groove that it's in. All right. So there we go. Now we're disconnected at the bottom. Um, I apologize if you can't see, uh, but that's all. We're just gonna pull it through now the bottom of the chair, or the seat back, I should say. Uh, and turn you guys around. And then we're just gonna pull it out there. So we're gonna pull the foam up with it. All right, and we're just gonna leave it just like that for now as you can see now we can see the inside workings of the seat back we may or may not have to put it back in the vehicle to use the controls to actuate it while looking at it i'm going to look at it first visually and see if i see anything apparent so i'm just going to do a quick look let me get you guys on a closer camera all right fam so i got you guys on the hand cam uh, I'm just going to walk in here and we're going to take a look at it together real quick. See what we see. There are little locks here on this side. Well, that looks like that's for the headrest. We got a linkage here. Looks like the backrest lock and actuator. That looks okay. Nothing there. Can we come over? To this side let's take a look over here um we got our motor for going up and down and then here we have our actuator and our linkage is completely disconnected if you can see that there hopefully you could see it there's the linkage and there's where it's supposed to be right in this hole here and the rod is not connected at all so that's our problem and it doesn't look like we need any actual parts so that's good everything seems to be here it just fell out of position so 
Looks like this is going to be a no dollar fix. Just labor. Looks like this just slides down. And you could actually pop it out there at the end. And then I'm just going to slide it back over the rod. And hopefully slide it right back up towards I'm gonna have to put the camera down but I'm going to um, slide it right back up here to this opening and connect them both back together so let me do that um, or actually it looks like it may just pop right off of this actuator even there we go pops right off the actuator um, there's a little cutout right here hopefully you can see that little cutout so it just pops right off so I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the linkage and slide it back up like that and then snap it back on the actuator just like that easy no problem all right so there you go the linkage rod is back in this actuator I guess you shaft whatever you want to call it um, but they're connected again just like that side fairly easy fix actually I think it could snap in even further okay be warned that there's a little slot too in this uh, sleeve that we put on the actuator if you can see that right there there's a little cutout so we need to actually snap that linkage in even further just like that see it now now it's snapped in even further and it's actually poking out the other side now so that's perfect all right so i think we got that fixed this is going pretty easy uh, but now we got to put the upholstery back together and then we'll put it in the vehicle and test it out um, before putting all the plastics and stuff back in so we're gonna go ahead and put this upholstery on now put it in the vehicle and take it for a test run and see if it actually folds All right, fam, let me show you where we're at so far. We got the four bolts that hold the seat back in position. Uh, we got those put back in the back here, as well as the front on each corner. So now we have to hook up our seat belts. Again, to hook up our seat belts, all we do is find this hole at the top and it's got an elongated slot here. So you'll find the little hook that it hooks onto here on the side of your seat. Uh, and then you're just gonna go ahead and pull it up to it snaps in position. And then check it, make sure it's in position. It is a safety item. So we wanna make sure that's done right. So don't forget this important step. And then we'll put that plastic cover back on. Same thing on this side. Let me bring you in closer right there and then you're going to go ahead and pull up into it clips into position once it clips into position give it a couple tugs make sure it's right because it is safety again you want to make sure it's done right 
All right, so that's it. Now we're gonna plug it in and see if we fixed it. And again, we're gonna connect there with these wires. And then they just snap back in place. Give them a good tug, make sure that they're in. Same thing on this side. Just match up the color. And snap them in. All right, now here's the moment of truth. We're gonna test it out and fold both seats. So we know that one already works. It's still functioning. And here is the one that we hope works also now. Oh, and it doesn't. Oh, fail. All right, fam, so I figured I owed you guys a little more detail because when I put it all back together and tried it out, it did not work. So I had some more diagnosing to do. Um, I think there were two issues going on in here. Uh, I pulled the seat back apart uh, in the vehicle this time. I didn't take it all the way out. So keep that in mind. You may be able to do this whole job with the seat back still bolted in position. Uh, but in either case, I just want to bring you in here so you could take a look. Um, hopefully there's enough light, but there's this motor here. It's like a window motor, basically, that drives the gear here to make the seat fold and go up and go down. Uh, now we repaired the mechanism here for the lock, which locks the back into position. But uh, I also had a problem with the motor. Now, this is a theory and only a theory, but what I think happened is when the lock disengaged from its linkage here this side got stuck so every time it went down uh, or tried to go down but it was still locked in position this motor was getting uh, out of sync and what I mean is that it ended up in a position on the gear where I think it was trying to go up when it should have been going down and vice versa so it sensed that um, it wasn't moving because obviously if it was trying to go down when it was supposed to be going up it would already be down too far and it would sense that resistance and the motor would stop um, and then the other way if you're already up and you're trying to go down but the motor thinks it's already down it go it's forcing backwards uh, against the hinge so it can't go any further and then the motor stops so um, yeah, I think that's what was happening. So basically, uh, in a nutshell, you have to take these two bolts off if you're having that problem. Um, obviously, I checked to see if I had power and my fuses were good. But uh, go ahead, needless to say, take these bolts out here, these Allen bolts. Uh, you're going to have to pry the motor out. It's on the shaft pretty tight. So uh, after these two bolts are out, uh, pry gently behind the back but you're gonna have to use a little force because it is on there pretty tight uh, once you get it off uh, run it with the button with the motor out up and down and then I think at the end I had the seat back in up position so I went ahead and pushed the button to make this motor go to the upward position to match what the seat back is actually at uh, and then I reinstalled the motor uh, it was still clocked a little bit off from the bolts so I just hit up again, up again, and then kind of moved it with my thumb until these holes lined up. Um, and then I put it all back together, and now it seems to function uh, right. So let me show you that real quick before I put the seat back together. Um, just real quick, you hit the button, and now it starts to go down. I'm not going to go all the way down because the seat back's not put back together. But see, then you can go back up, and you hear it lock in position. So I think we got it fixed. I uh, just wanted to show you this motor inside and tell you if you fix the linkage and it's still not working, uh, this motor might have got jammed up and hopefully it should work for you. That fixed it for me. But I just felt I wouldn't do you guys justice if I didn't tell you that little bit because that was the game changer. Um, taking that motor out and reinstalling it after clocking it in the right position because at first... I thought I, the thing was still broken. So 
Everything should work just fine now. Let me go ahead and put this back together and then um, we're gonna test it out. So let me jump to that now. I'm gonna put you guys on a tripod. All right, fam, one quick look at it before we end the video. We'll take a look at our work here. We got our two seat backs for the third row. Uh, this one always went down, so that's the same. And now the side that was broken and wouldn't retract, now retracts as designed, headrest drops and everything. And now we have full axis of a cargo area. We'll go ahead and drop these seats real quick so y'all can see. So you can see how much cargo area I was losing by not being able to fold that seat. Um, it was horrible. I'm super happy. I finally got that rear seat to automatically fold again. Um, it wasn't very hard to fix. We're gonna go ahead and end this video. Remember, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and consider subscribing. That really helps us grow. Uh, I'm trying to put out content not only to entertain you, but to educate you and help you out along the way as you work on your own vehicle. Uh, keep in mind, I do have these project vehicles like the Skylark I mentioned earlier, the 33 Ford Pickup, the 73 Camaro, the Jeep, and I have the GLA 250, which I'm not sure what I'm going to do if I do anything with that at all. But we have a heavy rotation of fleet. So we have a lot of different vehicles we have on the channel. Uh, if you're not into the Audi content, check out the 33 Ford pickup, check out the Skylark, check out the Camaro, check out the Jeep, whatever flavor you guys are into, I'm down to show you content. So go ahead and tap into the channel. And if you like what you saw today, go ahead and smash that like button and hit that notification bell to be notified of my next episode because I drop bangers weekly. And until next time, stay good, family. Peace.